So this is the rainbowing right here that I've tried to show in my other videos. As you can see, all that rainbowing. That's when you know it's ready to come off. It has cured. Welcome back to Fab Automotive Detailing. In this video, we are going to switch it up yet again from away from my normal type of videos. We are going to be detailing a beautiful orange Harley Davidson. I have not detailed a, a motorcycle in a long time. I have owned three in my life, and I was in an accident back in 2005 where a guy pulled out in front of me. I didn't have time to do anything. I T-boned him and went head first into his car, and then I stayed off a motorcycle for about five years. I bought another one, and I, will, I don't want to say I was scared to ride because I rode it for almost a year, but every time I'd come to an intersection, I was always already on my brakes thinking a car was going to pull out in front of me. That took the fun away. So I got rid of the bike, and I'm glad I did because now when people are driving around, all you see them do is this when they're driving. That scares the crap out of me if you're a motorcycle, motorcycle rider. Um, so this bike we're going to be doing, I'll show you the wash process, process and everything like that. This video is going to not showcase any type of specific products. I'm using all kinds of different products on this motorcycle. Um, and there'll be voiceovers. And then if there's a part of the video where I need to speak, you know, I'll do that. But like I said, it's going to be a little bit different than normal. But I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go down, down there right now and hit that subscribe button. And then hit that notification bell so when I upload my next video, you get notified. So, let's do it. Okay, so here it is. It's a 2013. I don't know what model it is, you guys. Um, I've never owned a Harley. I have owned cruisers before, but one was a Yamaha, one was a Honda. Ultra Classic. Hey, see it? The hoof just showed me. It's an Ultra Classic. Right there. But anyways, it's a beautiful color, this orange. It's a metallic orange. Uh, the sun is not on it right now, but we need to get the bugs off the front. It's got bugs on the headlights, down here on the shocks, right there. Um, wheels are filthy. There's a bug right inside here. Not sure what I'm gonna put on this yet. So I've got a little bit of oil right there. Get the chrome done. This pipe is starting to brown and blue, which is weird because the other side is not. It's a beautiful bike. It's also got something right here. Now there you can kind of see the sparkle there in the paint. If not, I'll show it to you guys inside. He just wants a wash and a polish the chrome up and get a good protection on it. That's all he's wanting. So we are going to foam it with my Griot's Garage Foam Cannon. And the reason that I want to use this is I don't have to worry about wasting soap. It's going to be directly out of here. And whatever I use, I use. I don't have to put some in a bottle and hopefully hope I use it all and not waste any. But this thing's pretty much loaded, this bike. It just needs a good cleaning. So that's about it and we will get started. So let's go ahead and get this video started. I'm using the Griot's Garage's green wheel cleaner. I love this wheel cleaner. It's safe for chrome wheels. Uh, you know this bike has chrome all over it. I use the Griot's Garage's foam wheel cleaning brush. I love those. Very safe for chrome wheels. It doesn't scratch. I did do the, the rear wheel but I'm not going to show that because it's really hard. It's really tight spaces to get the camera in there. I, I was able to condense this video down to 28 minutes, you guys. I have over four hours of video recorded on the motorcycle. I did clean the bugs with Clear's Garage of Bug and Smudge Remover. I don't show it here in the video. I wanted to show you guys more of the paint correction stages and the applying a coating and everything else like we're doing on this bike, the spray coating. And I thought that was a little bit more important than showing you guys the wash process when I was editing. All right, so we're gonna start foaming. I am not going to foam the cluster where the speedometer and the radio and everything is, but I will clean that area. But I'm gonna foam everything else on the motorcycle. Here we go.
when detailing a motorcycle, you really need a set of detailing brushes like I'm using here in the video. These aren't the best on the market, but they're pretty good. I got them off Amazon, but they get you in the nooks and crannies like right there on the engine fins. Gets there that surface or the dirt that you normally can't get with your wash mitt. These get in there, get that dirt out of there so that when you rinse it away, it is nice and clean. So for washing the actual motorcycle, I am using a Shiny's Detail microfiber wash mitt. Um, it's one of his newer ones and it is definitely one of the softest microfiber wash mitts I have ever used. I will put links in the description of the video to every product that I used in this detail. So now that the wash process is over and the motorcycle has sat overnight and dried, it's time to clay the paint to decontaminate it. I did not do a chemical decontamination because it wasn't bad at all. I just did a mechanical decontamination with Griot's Garage's Speed Shine and Griot's Garage's Paint Cleaning Clay. Um, it works extremely well. It's one of my favorites when it comes to clay and paint. So to correct the swirled up paint, we're going to use Greer's Garage's Fast Correcting Cream with a 2 inch microfiber pad on their 3 inch polisher, which no longer works by the way. I do have it, but it's, it's done. But it, Fast Correcting Cream finishes down really well to where you don't have to go a second step in the polishing. You can go straight to whatever you're going to use to protect the paint. And as you can see here, Fast Correcting Cream, when it's teamed up with the microfiber pad, finishes down really well. As you saw the swirls there, go to the right, swirls are gone, the paint looks great. As you can see right here, the paint looks absolutely fantastic. I got about 98% paint correction done, which is a really good number. There's just a few stragglers here and there. I'm really happy with that. Now this bag is ready for protection. This is the side of the other bag. So it shows you a bigger panel with swirl marks on it and how well this product takes care of these swirls with a three inch polisher. And as you can see here, it took care of the, the light swirls on the side of the bags. No problem at all. Not a lot of effort. Teamed up with a microfiber pad and fast correcting cream. This underpowered three inch polisher did a fantastic job. I was extremely happy with these side panels. They were hammered, as you guys saw earlier, and they just turned out looking absolutely amazing. They look wet, dripping wet right now, and that's before putting even anything on it. Um, very happy with the way that these plastic side panels turned out. All right, so it's time to move on to the fairing. Now, I did decide to put a piece of tape on here. You guys know I don't like to do that but I wanted to give you a really good 50-50 of the fairing because it had the heaviest swirls um, that on the entire bike was on the fairing was the worst swirl. So I'm gonna be able to show you right here how good the fast correcting cream is at removing the swirl.
So now it's time to move on to the gas tank. For some reason, I had a hard time uh, filming this to where you could pick the swirls up really good on the gas tank. Um, you can see them right there. Uh, in person, they were definitely worse. But in the metallic, you can't see the swirls at all, but there were some there also. One thing you have to remember on a motorcycle is the gas tank is made of metal, unlike most of the bike is plastic, like the fairing and everything. So the metal gas tank, I can apply more pressure um, than I did on the plastic pieces because plastic can't dissipate heat as well as metal can. So now it's time to move on to the rear trunk cargo area. This this area proved to be the most difficult. It wasn't bad, but um, because of the, the buckles and everything, I just had to kind of work around them as I was running the polisher. And on top where the cargo carrier, what I would consider, not cargo carrier, but the luggage rack, I'm sorry, where it was, I had to do all of that by hand. Um, the swirls were not bad in that area anyways because not much stuff touches underneath there. But as you can see right here, you saw the swirls a minute ago, the swirls, in the flat area you can see are gone they are a lot more evident in the flat area than it is in the metallic but you gotta remember that the swirls are in the metallic just like they are in the flat painted area and i was really happy with the way it turned out so on comes the fairing which took me the absolute longest of the whole motorcycle because i had to do it by hand i used some detailing swabs that i got from shiny's detail i use adam's revive hand polish which works really really good on chrome now there were not a lot of swirls in the paint i don't show you doing the paint by hand but that's how i did it just like you're watching right now i did the paint the same way there were not a lot of swirls i just wanted to get just a little bit of a polish to it um, so that it's nice and glossy when i applied uh, the protection to it but i did all the trim all the bezels all the trim on the bezels the paint the handlebars, the switches on the handlebars, just like you're watching here. And honestly, I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. I always like to go the extra mile in my detailing um, because like in situations like this, this is what the driver or the rider is always going to see when he's on the motorcycle. And I wanted it to look as perfect as possible. So now it's time to move on to the part of the motorcycle that I don't really care for doing, to be honest with you, but when you get done, it's like, holy cow, look at that. It's just the chrome. I love chrome um, on motorcycles, but I use Neverdull. That's an, that's an older product that's been around for years, and it's still a fantastic product for chrome on motorcycles. I use it to clean it, um, and then I actually use the isopropyl alcohol to clean the chrome again afterwards before I applied the coating. You're going to see later on in the video because I applied the coating to all the chrome as well, but... This is another part of the motorcycle that's very, it's a meticulous job. It, it takes a lot of patience, um, making sure you get all the nooks and crannies because if you miss a spot on chrome, you're gonna notice it forever. And it's very important you get every single piece that you can possibly get. Some of the valve covers are kind of hard to get to like right there, especially the front of that one. But I do the absolute best that I can to get every single piece. This bike has more chrome than any other motorcycle that I've ever done before. And I'll be honest with you, when I got done doing this side of the bike, I was just done. I was like, okay, I don't want to do any more of this chrome. But I still had the bars that go around the bags, the chrome on the back of the bike. I had both wheels, front and rear. I had the light bar. I had the forks. Um, just there's so much chrome on this bike. It's kind of unreal as you're doing it. Right, right there on the footboards, I did the chrome in between the rubber. And it was, it was tiring. Even though you, you're just sitting there, but you're bent over doing this, it was tiring. But when I got done... It just looked absolutely amazing. Okay, all the chrome work is done, which is a pretty tedious job. You notice it's dark out, but I stopped about halfway. We went out, got some dinner, went to Walmart, got some stuff for the camping trip this weekend. I've been gone for a little while, but front wheel looks fantastic. The back wheel is an absolute pain, but I made sure I got in here. Got all the bright work done. This is the only downside to the exhaust system, the bluing. Right there. Yes, this is gross, but I'm gonna I'm gonna handle that. Did these bars. I did the back wheel, which is really hard to do. I mean extremely hard. As you can see, there's not a lot of room to get your hands in there exhaust all the chrome in the back i did all the chrome and the lettering here around the box right 
there. I mean, anything chrome, I touched, I cleaned. This is how I used to always do it on my old motorcycles, on the chrome. Used to used to use a product called um, Extreme. Basically, it's the same thing as Never Doll. When I used to work at Wheel Country, which is where I met my wife, that's what we used on chrome wheels when I worked there. It's gonna look so nice when the saddlebags are in. Everything looks really good. Real happy with it. Really happy with the paint. Dash everything on here. That's chrome. All the bezels are chrome. Speakers, I touched all of them. I cleaned all of them. I cleaned all the switches on both sides. I cleaned the handles. I cleaned the black plastic. The brake light or the the brake and the clutch. Clean those. Backs the mirrors. And the light bar. And the forks. And everything. So now it is time to move on to um, getting the paint ready for what I plan on putting, putting on it tomorrow. So I'm going to use an isopropyl alcohol to wipe it all down. I'm not going to show that on video. We will just move on to what I'm going to use to protect the paint. Okay, what we're going to uh, put on it is the Adams spray coating. I really like this. It's very easy to use, user friendly, um, easy on, easy off. Now the sprayer clogged up after the first use and is no good. So I'm going to have to just dab it onto my applicator like I would a normal coating and we'll apply it like that. We just got to put the lid back on every time. Kind of like that right there. And that's plenty to do these little panels. Let it sit on there for about a minute. And then remove it. I like this product because, like I said, it's user friendly. So high spots are not a big ordeal. You can see the gloss is great. Panel looks really good. I'm not seeing any high spots on that one. So the bags are done and just check out the gloss, especially up here in the metallic, because down here is more of a flat paint, I mean it looks great also, but up there just it looks like dripping wet. Love this ceramic spray coating, like I said it's user friendly so if you're the type of person that doesn't want to do an actual coating, you're kind of scared to do it, I get it, this is perfect for you because it's very user friendly.
All right, everything has been coated, including the chrome, wheels, exhaust, everything. Everything looks really good. This is going to be a long video. Did the handles, mirrors, and everything. Did the seat in the Cody as well. Makes a nice rich black. So good with that coating on there. Alrighty, well the family and I are going to go camping, as you can see, uh, for the weekends. Long weekends, Labor Day weekend. This video is not going to go out for a while, but uh, I'm going to pick this video back up on Monday. When we get home, I'm going to put a spray sealant on top, and then it'll be all done. Alright, you guys, we have made it back from our camping trip successfully. So we're going to. So this stuff is actually let me let me state the Adams ceramic spray coating which is not spray coating because I dabbed it onto the pad but anyways has been on for over 48 hours now we're going to top it with the epic ceramic refresher I absolutely love this stuff it doesn't streak it flashes really fast and uh, the water the hydrophobics are absolutely amazing and it doesn't take much all we're gonna do is we're gonna rub it in with the gray towel we're gonna buff it with the blue towel that's it now we got a spray sealant on that cover. Same thing with this one. It does not take a lot. A little bit goes a long way. And that's it. Those covers are ready to rock and roll. They look absolutely fantastic. I'm not going to show you much of this ceramic refresher because I should have already put a video out about it. If everything has gone right. One thing that does suck though is I have no videos ready for this week. I, they're recorded, they're up there, we've been camping. Uh, it just feels so smooth when you go back over it like that. It just leaves a great surface to it. So I'm going to finish the whole bike and then you guys are going to see what it looks like when it's all done. Alright, so here we go. It is all done.
Well, there you guys have it. That is a full detail of this 2013 Harley Davidson Ultra Classic. Absolutely gorgeous motorcycle. The orange and the flakes are absolutely amazing. The flakes look yellow in the sun. This bike is ready to hit the road just like it did when it was a brand new condition except for my opinion it's better it's now got a ceramic coating on it that should last well over a year for them because here in indiana we only ride motorcycles four months out of the year maybe five months out of the year that's it and then it sits in a garage the rest you know all winter long and beginning of spring and into fall so it, it that ceramic coating should last six to eight months normally but I bet you he can get a year to two years out of it, especially with maintenance washes and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to tell him, you know, he's got to do that type of stuff, maintenance washes. And it's going to be so hydrophobic now when he goes to wash it. And it's going to clean the bugs off easy. I put the ceramic coat in like on the plexiglass windshield. Um, I put it on everything, the chrome, the wheels, everything, the paint. And then I use the ceramic refresher and I used it on everything. And that ceramic refresher sheets water like they're like it's nobody's business. This stuff is absolutely amazing. I could not be happier with the way that this motorcycle turned out, you guys. They're going to absolutely love it when they see it because they were expecting just a wash and a wax. That's what he asked me for. And I just kind of went above and beyond for him because I've known him for a long time. I went above and beyond. I made this bike look extremely good. I'm really happy with it. It has a lot to do with my products. A lot of it, the products make make me look like I do a good job, I guess is what I should say. The products do majority of the work. I'm just there to guide the products on, to put them where they need to be. But these products that I use are absolutely fantastic. Like I said, we started out by washing the, washing the bike. Uh, we foamed it. And then from there, I clayed the paint. Then we corrected the paint. And then we applied the Adams ceramic spray coating. And then I let it cure for 48 hours because it was gone for 48 hours. Otherwise, I'd have waited 24 hours. Um, and then I put the ceramic refresher from Malco on it. That just topped it off. That just gave it that extra little bit of extra gloss than what the ceramic coating did. And I'm telling you, it, this bike is absolutely amazing. I'm really happy with it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is not my normal type of detail video. It was probably longer than normal. There was voiceovers. There was normal talking. There was parts where I didn't talk. It's just different. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe, uh, subscribe button. Join the Fab family. Hit that notification bell so the next time I upload a video, you get notified. And we will see you in the next video.